Welcome everybody, my name is Michael, and today we're discussing about Do Kwon being captured by the Montenegrin police in the capital of Podgorica. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Do Kwon has been charged by both the United States and by South Korea. They put out a red notice through Interpol. Essentially, all the countries on this planet, hey, wherever this crypto entrepreneur is who committed a crime, I think it's the capital markets law crime or whatever, that in South Korea, he essentially lied. You know, the, the there was $40 billion worth of capital that vanished thanks to uh, the terror USD fiasco. This guy lied about the effectiveness of his products, and he is a criminal. Therefore, can you capture him? And he was captured using fake identification in his sweats. And now he has to go through a court in Montenegro where they're going to decide where is he being extradited to, to the U.S. or to South Korea. And there's a number of variables. Where was this crime committed? Um, who was impacted more? Um, first of all, if he does go to the U.S., he's probably going to get a stronger sentence. So some South Korean experts actually want him to go to the U.S., and that's probably true. If he does go back to South Korea, who knows what can happen? Um, either way, he's facing some jail time. Obviously, in the U.S., he's facing eight charges. Um, maybe some won't stick, but that's how they do it. They throw as much as they can. Maybe all eight of them will. And he's facing some serious time and consequences and penalties for that. But it honestly depends on the diplomacy of the Montenegrin government. And they're probably just going to send him to South Korea. Maybe that's easier. Who knows? It, it really is tough to know exactly what's going to happen. Uh, but Do Kwon still has some capital around the world, and they're probably going to try and seize as much as they can to pay the act victims, or at least seize it for the government's uh, advantage. And with that said, Montenegro has extradited a previous U.S. couple, uh, couple back to America. There is no formal uh, treaty between Montenegro and the U.S., but just because there's no treaty doesn't mean they can't extradite. And... Um, with South Korea and Montenegro, they actually do have a, Montenegro is part of Europe, there's a European treaty, I guess, with South Korea, so they have a little bit more leverage there, um, but America is more powerful, and there's going to be a lot of politics at play, so it really does vary, I don't know, it's a 50-50 at this point. Um, Montenegro will probably take maybe a couple months, and by the time this is done, who knows, he's going to be extradited somewhere. And he's going to spend a good portion of his life behind bars, potentially, unless he goes back to Korea. And it, it's very interesting right now. So Do Kwon was residing in Singapore. He is a Stanford graduate. He spent some time in America. Uh, this has happened in South Korea. And up until six months ago, he vanished from Singapore. And there was reports that he was somewhere in Eastern Europe or Central Europe. And here we are at the airport of Podgorica, where he was arrested uh, hours after his arrest, the Manhattan U.S. Attorney's Office charged Mr. Crone with eight criminal counts of fraud, alleging he lied about the effectiveness of TerraUSD's algorithm and conspired to manipulate the price of the stablecoin. And a uh, spokeswoman for the Seoul Southern District Prosecutor's Office, the ones who are investigating the TerraUSD crash, uh, said the office believes that a South Korean citizen should be punished in South Korea and that doing so would be the most helpful way of addressing the victims. Um, however, he may get a more lenient uh, policy or a sentence over there. So Montenegro is going to be very slow. Uh, it is going to be diplomatic. It is going to require a lot of politics. And the lengthy court proceedings can take well over actually even a year. I would expect this case would take at least several months. Some cases take years, said Jacques Semmelman. He's a former Brooklyn federal prosecutor and partner at a law firm currently. Extraditions typically take place when two countries have an existing formal agreement. Mr. Semmelman said the U.S. has no bilateral extradition treaty. It puts it at a disadvantage. South Korea and Montenegro are parties to a multilateral treaty known as the European Convention on Extradition. I think South Korea has a more compelling claim. However... The U.S. could also make an extradition request to Seoul if he was extradited to South Korea. So he still might go to America either way. And extraditions can still happen again, as earlier stated, without a treaty. Um, based on an international committee, a recognition by one country that proceedings in another country are viewed fair. 
Montenegro might just agree to extradite to America. They've done it before, and uh, in this case, you know, it's one of the most powerful countries in the in the planet. So, with that said, Del Quone might be facing some harsh jail time. If it is a year or even more, Montenegro's jails and prisons haven't changed from those described in a 2020 Human Rights Report by the U.S. Department. The report cited a case in which prison officers had been convicted of torturing and inflicting a grievous bodily harm on 11 inmates in 2015, as well as other poor conditions in some of Montenegro's prisons due to overcrowding, lack of medical care, and other pretty severe reasons. So right now, uh, prisoners on average are subjected to overcrowded cells for roughly 23 hours a day. And of course, there could be violence in between the inmates during those cells. Uh, he could be facing at least a year. Rooms are eight meters squared and very crowded. There's about 10 to 11 people in a room. There's usually not even a bed, which, uh, that's not good. This obviously echoes uh, what's going on in America with Sam Bankman Freed, who was extradited from the Bahamas. Except in this case, um, the capital claim law for market, whatever, in South Korea, it's going to carry a much less grievous punishment than for SBF. And America is very tough with this stuff. If I was uh, Do Kwon, I would do everything possible to go to South Korea, but it's out of his hands at this point, unless he can bribe some people. So, and Montenegro, I mean, that might be possible. You never know, honestly. Uh, he probably didn't make the best decision going to Montenegro. There's better countries he could have gone to. It's not the worst country he could have gone to, of course. It's not the best, but... Um, Obviously, you want to go to a country with no extradition treaties to America or the country of origin that you're coming from or being accused of uh, committing these crimes in. And Bill Cohen was also bragging uh, online, which isn't ever good. So it is crazy what is happening recently with all these decamillionaires and uh, billionaires getting arrested and busted. It's certainly interesting where before we thought these people would be invincible they're no longer anonymous well they never were but um there's a great interest now in cryptocurrency crimes and it's almost like let's do it for the greatest publicity we can to show the other crypto criminals what we can do and what you should be afraid of so very interesting very interesting but that is mr doquone you have a good one. Oh. Uh, take care. See ya.